Look what came into the mail today. So this is a copy done by Schiller. It's a copy of the Meinl Weston Thor, which is a five quarter double C tuba. Um, funny enough, this also has the graduated bore through the valves, which I really like. Um, so I'm about to cut open it and I will show you the box once I'm Georgia done cutting. area. Lone Wolf Knives makes an amazing Damascus knife with custom designs. Neat little old school tuba. So I got the top flaps open. Package is a little beat up. I, I expect that's UPS. Uh, let's open it. Oh. Oh no. Um. Huh. Well, I've never seen this type of foam used before. This is a pretty sturdy foam, but it just looks very messy. It's like a, a molded foam almost, or a plastifoam. Anyway, they have some more up here that kind of got taped to the lid, but I'm going to pull this out of here, and then I'll show you all once it's pulled out. Taking all this off, and this is something to note. A little weird way to do this, they just put two plastic um, styrofoam inserts into the siding here. Don't know how well that protected it, but we're about to find out. There's some of the packaging. This stuff's weird, man. I've never seen this on any tube I've unpacked. I've packed, unpacked a few of them before. Uh, gross feeling. Ooh. Instrument to my bedroom, which is a bit more sanitary than my garage, and I'm about to take off this plastic wrap. Something to note with this tube specifically, I don't know if this case is extra heavy duty. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like a regular, you know, canvas Chinese case. Um, but this is extremely, extremely heavy. What it looks like outside of the wrap. You have your Schiller logo. This is actually not bad, too bad of a case. It's like a thicker canvas than what you would expect from a Chinese brand. Let's see if they have any goodies in here. Oh, they feel around. Oh, they have a little cleaning kit with some blue juice. Never use blue juice on your tubas. That stuff is bad. L cast is much better, but it's nice that they add it um, in this little uh, Chinese Bach 24 AW uh, replica. Not bad. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, nope, doesn't seem to be. Let's get it open and see what this tuba looks like. Automatically off the bat, um, that is concerning because that is a whole bunch of small particles of filling. Um, tuba feels solid. Um, it's that's actually quite thick metal. Don't know what this is. We'll find that out in a minute. Ooh, doesn't look bad though. I'm gonna finish unpacking it and then we'll we'll actually see the full tuba and how it looks. Interrupting y'all's viewing, but a note to the manufacturer. Never do this. If you're gonna put plastic inside of your bell, make sure you have a plastic cover around it. it prevents all this crap from getting in here. So now, before I can put the tuba back in the case, I have to vacuum it all because you don't want things like this getting in the crooks of your horn or in your valves. That's a good way to ruin a horn. So I finished um, vacuuming the inside. I just wanted to make a couple notes. Uh, this case is not great. Um, obviously, you're going to have some price cuts, especially when you're spending this much on a horn. Um, I tell people all the time, it's not the brand of the horn, but the player. And part of that is true. But there are certain things you should fix on a horn if you get it. But I'll get into that in a later video. Or later on in this video. So now they reveal. Wow. <laughs> it is a heavy case though. So there's your brand. It's a Schiller. Has really, really, actually pretty decent valve action. They're going to be a little bit better once I oil them up. But they're not bad out of the box. They remind me of Minor Weston valves actually. Little on the heavier side. Um, with that being said though, this fifth rotor... Is also not bad um, and it comes right here a little bit of smudge on there but it's nothing like bad lacquer or anything and this looks to be um, a gold lacquer not gold plate so this is all these the little the thumb ring the fifth rotor the valve caps the valve bottoms as well as some of these slides are all gold lacquered, not gold plated. But this does look to be a real silver plate. It's not nickel plate at all. Um, it's very bright to the eye. 
But I'm going to pick this horn up and I'm going to play some notes on it. So just got here this morning with the new tuba um, and some first impressions so far. Um, it, it plays great. Um, I had one of my colleagues come and listen and they actually agreed it's a very um, fat sound, which is good. And uh, he didn't tell anything wonky intonation wise. Uh, the first valve is so slightly flat, um, but that's why you just push in. It's really not that big of an issue. Anyway, here's some of the first few sounds on it in the morning before I do my full warm up. Uh, it's a beautiful horn, by the way. Let me back up for you some. good um i'm still working on the uh tendencies as well as some slotting things just because it's a new horn to me but so far it plays uh fantastic actually i would actually i would um i would compare this a lot to the 836 the eastman 836 um or even the um the uh wessex uh york chicago york um these play, this play is fairly similar. Um, actually, I feel like I get more zip to this sound than either one of those horns. Um, there's a reason they nicknamed the original of this, the, the Minor Lesson Thor, there's a reason they nicknamed it the Hammer. I mean, it really is just a hammer of sound. Um, uh, I'll do another video of some more playing with some more fundamental stuff for y'all, but I hope y'all enjoy the first impressions of this pretty interesting tuba.